Madam Chair, seriously, I, I want to uh, I want to just take just a second and, and thank you because I, I will tell you the truth. We just finished a, a five week break during August, and in my in my district, I went around the whole district telling them that I serve on the oldest, most diverse, most bipartisan committee in Congress, and that is the Energy and Commerce Committee, and I truly believe that. And what we've been working on here, and what we, and I told them about what we're working in, robocalls, surprise billing, that we've worked on in a bipartisan fashion. We've also worked on prescription drug pricing in a bipartisan fashion. We've passed at least nine bills out of here in a bipartisan fashion, three of which I was the co-sponsor on that I'm very proud of. I have to tell you that I, I was extremely disappointed whenever I saw the speaker's plan here. And we knew it was coming. We never saw it, but when we saw it. But I want to thank you for your commitment that we will have a markup and subcommittee on this because it is extremely important for us to engage in regular order, and that's very important. Why is this issue so personal to me, and it is so personal to me? Because, listen, I was the one on the other side of the counter. For so many years, I was the one who had to tell the patient how much this medication was. I was the one who witnessed the mother crying because she couldn't afford the medication for her daughter. I was the one who watched the senior citizens try to make a decision on whether they were going to buy medicine or whether they were going to buy groceries. That's why it's so personal to me. And that's why I want to do something about it, and I'm going to do something about it. And we are doing something about it. Let's not sell ourselves short. We've passed some good legislation in this committee that we need to continue to work on. I am concerned because I, I will be quite honest with you. In my years of practice in pharmacy, I've seen nothing short of miracles as a result of research and development. And I applaud the pharmaceutical manufacturers for that. However, it does you no good whatsoever if you can't afford it. I understand that and I get that. But I'm extremely concerned. And I want to ask you, Dr. Epileto, about the impact on research and development, about this proposal, specifically about the, what I consider to be the price controls. Because the price controls, I feel like, are going to, are, are going to inhibit research and development. And I, I, cannot, I, I cannot adhere to that. I, I cannot go along with that. Yeah, I mean, I think I share some of your, your core concern, which is, you know, it'd be great if, if we could, you know, get every drug under the sun, but if nobody can afford it, well, then, then it doesn't do anybody any good, right? So I don't want to spend the entire country's GDP on pharmaceuticals. Um, but the question is, how do we make sure that we keep making progress while actually having folks get access to these drugs? And when I look at, I mean, when I look at the Part D, I know you want to talk about the, the, the price setting, but the, the Part D redesign, I think, is a good and, example. And if that. I could mention, we yeah. have actually in this committee, we, we've actually sought input. What you see here are 83, <laughs> 83 different comments that we've had about how we can revamp our Part D system. We can make it better. Yeah, and so I, I think I, I, I do want to keep emphasizing that. I, I really do think there's a lot to like there, and it does get at, I think, this balance that you're trying to strike. With the price setting, you know, like I've said, we know the direction of the effect. If you reduce the prices a lot, you're going to see some reduced innovation. The question is exactly how much, and that's hard for anybody to predict. It, it is hard to predict, but, and, and listen, as, as abrasive as we find it to be, you're absolutely right. Venture capitalists are, are going, this is going to make them look elsewhere. I, I mean, I'd like to think that, yes, they're in it for the good of man, and I'm sure some of them are, but they're also in it to make money. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not opposed to anybody making money, but at the same time, we have to be realistic here. And I look and I see what we've done. I, I'm co-chair, uh, along with my good friend, Representative Mark Desanye from California, of the Cancer Survivor Caucus here in Congress. What we've done, seen, we've seen a 22% decrease in cancer and deaths due to cancer since 1991. In HIV and AIDS, we've seen an 85% decrease since 1995 as a result of research and development. This is phenomenal. And when I hear this, I think about the dreaded disease Alzheimer's. What kind of impact? It, by 2050, it's estimated that 14 million people will have this disease, and that it will cost this country $1.1 trillion. If we don't have research and development into this, we are going to lose. We're going to lose that battle. That's why we've got to make sure that there, that incentive remains there. Yep, and, and I think that's exactly the kind of thing that I think about. There are access today, there's concerns about access today, 
but we've got to keep in mind access tomorrow. And access tomorrow means access to something that we don't actually know what, what it's going to be. And that's kind of the hard part of it. But when you put it in terms of things like Alzheimer's, I think it's a, it's a good way of understanding just the, kind of, just the kind of rewards that are out there if we do this right. I realize I'm out of time, but I will say there are plenty of things that we can do outside of drug price controls. Thank you, and I yield back.